intelligence really is, is the ability to acquire and apply knowledge and skills. All of us have intelligence. Well, most of us. But what if we made a machine with it too? What would artificial intelligence look like? You've probably seen AI in science fiction films like Interstellar. Everybody good? Plenty of slaves for my robot colony? A giant, sarcastic robot. What a great idea. I have a cue lot I can use when I'm joking, if you like. That'd probably help. Yeah, you can use it to find your way back into the ship after I blow you out the airlock. Or 2001, A Space Odyssey. Open the pod bay doors, Hal. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. But AI is more than just science fiction. In 1997, Deep Blue, an AI built by IBM, beat the world's best chess player. That AI has only become better at chess, since meaning no matter how hard you train, you'll never be the best player at chess. AI is starting to outperform people on many more tasks. Recently, an AI built by Babylon Health has even been able to diagnose patients more accurately than the average doctor ever could. The best way to understand AI would be to make one. The purpose of AI is just to solve a problem, and it does this by turning a bunch of inputs into a bunch of outputs. So we're gonna need a problem. So like, I don't know, maybe, um, maybe you decide you want bare clout with all your mates. So you think, ah, I'll make an autonomous drone. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. And maybe I'll even fly around Gatwick. But actually, um, the feds would probably shoot it down and you'd have to sell for your Supreme to pay off the lawsuits. So we won't do that, but we'll carry on making the autonomous drone. So our problem is that we need the drone to be able to fly to a point. To start off, I've made the drone in a simulation. I'm gonna have my mate play it just to show how hard it is to pilot the drone manually. Okay, so I'm here with Duncan. Duncan, are you ready to fly uh, this drone? <laughs> Despite Duncan trying his best, he wasn't really that good. All he needed to do was fly a drone to that little ball. In fact, I've had more than 16 other people try to fly this drone and not one touched the ball. The issue is, flying the drone is much harder than it looks. Each button Duncan presses activates a different motor. If only one or two motors on the same side are on, then there will be a moment about the drone which will make it spin. This makes it very easy for the drone to spin out of control. Let's now create an AI to fly this drone. For this problem, we are going to use an artificial neural network, which looks like this. This design is similar to the neural network of our brain, but is heavily simplified and far less complex. Although it may seem complicated, it is very simple. Each ball is a node and represents an artificial neuron. These nodes all have a numerical value. The nodes are also arranged in different layers. There is an input layer, the hidden layers, and the output layer. Now, if you can understand how one node calculates its value, then you will understand the entire network since they all follow the same process. Let's take this node for example. You should notice that this node is connected to every node from the previous layer. These lines are simply called connections and they also have a value called a weight. Let's label this line's weight as W1, then W2, and lastly W3. Remember that all nodes have a value, and so we will label the input node's value as v1, v2, and v3. Now to calculate the value of our node, which we will call v4, we simply multiply the value of each node from the previous layer with the connection's weight, and then add these up. We also need to add one last thing called a bias. Every node, except for those in the input layer, have a bias. We now just repeat this process for every node in every layer until we get the values of our output nodes. So to use this, we need to think of what inputs to give the network and what outputs we want from it. All we can do to our drone is turn on or off a rotor. Since these rotors can also go into reverse, it would make sense that we want the network to produce a number anywhere from 1, which is full thrust up, 0, which is nothing, and minus 1, which is full thrust down. It can also produce a number in between, like 0.8 or minus 0.45, for example. So all we need then is four outputs, one for each rotor in the range of minus one to one. For the inputs, let's imagine what we would need if we were to try and actually program this AI ourselves. Position and velocity would certainly be important, as well as rotation and angular velocity. You can't represent position as one number, instead you need three separate numbers. 
one for the distance left or right, another for the distance up or down, and a final one for the distance forwards or backwards. This is the same for velocity, rotation, and angular velocity. This therefore gives us 12 inputs. Great. Now I'm also going to choose to have two hidden layers and 256 nodes in each layer. The exact number isn't very important as long as we think it's large enough for the network to have complex behavior while not being so large that it wastes computing power. We now have an input layer of 12 nodes, two hidden layers each of 256 nodes, and an output layer of 4 nodes. Since each node has a bias and is connected to all nodes from the previous layer, there will be a grand total of 70,148 weights and biases. These weights and biases need to be tweaked in such a way that we get a drone that behaves how we want it to. Now this would take forever for a person to do, so we will get the computer to do this for us, in a process called machine learning. For our neural network, we are going to use a type of machine learning called deep reinforcement learning. This is where things get very complicated, very quickly, with nasty formulae like this appearing. All you need to know is that we are essentially going to randomly tweak the weights and biases of our neural network, run a simulation of the AI and score its performance, we repeat this a few times and then take the highest scoring AI. We tweak its code a little bit, but this time not randomly, and instead use a special algorithm to do that, and then we repeat the process. We keep doing this until we end up with a perfect AI, or near perfect. The special algorithm we are going to use is called Proximal Policy Optimization, which was made by OpenAI, a company co-founded by Elon Musk. I will now start flooding you with information and just show you the drone learning to fly to the point. Here's where we will run our generated AI and score their performance. This is the magical program that would generate the AIs. And this is what the AI looks like at various stages of its training. It's also training at 15 times speed, by the way. Finally, we are done. This is Jim. He flies really well. This is Herbert. He flies more realistically, but not as well as Jim. Many people like to point out that AI is just a soulless machine that has systematically found a solution to a problem through the use of various algorithms. Because of this, AI can't create true art, music or creative literature as it does not understand the deeper meaning behind it. Whether this is true or not, AI has been able to produce some notable works. The music that played at the start of the video was composed by an AI. This particular AI, created by a company called JeepDeck, has also been able to entirely create a track itself. That was not a recording of a piano. Instead, it was a waveform created by the AI all within the computer in an effort to mimic the sound of a piano. An AI produced by Google has also been able to create art. So how about creative writing? With a quick Google search, I've been able to find many poems built by AI. Let's see if two of Bollet's best English students will be able to tell the real poems from the fake ones. All right, so I'm here with Alex Lyons. And now I'm here with Ed McLaren. Alex, we're gonna read some poetry. All right, and we're gonna read some poems as well. Look so thou dost thou shout a newspaper as soon as he cut out, they thinly. Music. I think that one was <laughs> <laughs> I think that <laughs> You're correct. I'll give you that. Shake against in beauty's rose might the breath most important but thinking media. Shake against in beauty's rose might the breath might the breath most important but thinking media. I don't understand what that sentence means at all. I think the syntax is too scrambled, I think it's AI. Um, when I in dreams behold thy fairest shade, whose shade in dreams doth wake the sleeping morn, the daytime shadow of my love betrayed, lends hideous night to dreaming's faded form. I'd say that's a person. I think that's a person. I think that's a person. <laughs> what epiphany, how little we breath and how much it trusts the secrets of the universe, of a red giant that wakes bird feathers, 
your warmth is a light filled with wounded kiss to seek another land. I think has probably more construction behind it um, than the rest of them. You've got references to Secrets of the Universe, which is followed up uh, by references to the Red Giant, which is of course a, uh, a planetary object, or rather a star, I should say. Um, I'm going to say that's a human being. Okay. You see, the truth is, this is the only real poem out of all of wow. the other poems. Everything else here was created by a machine. By a machine? Every single other one. Huh. Not bad. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> Not too bad. AI actually learns in a very similar way to how we learn. It's just not very clear since it uses a bunch of algorithms to do this. However, there exists no computer today where anywhere near the computational power or efficiency of our brain. We do not understand our brain entirely, but it's not unlikely that our brain is not unique and irreplaceable. If that's the case, then our brain is proof that it can be possible to create a machine with equal computational power, if not more than our own brain. If this was proven to be the case, should we create this artificial intelligence, which is smarter than we are? Perhaps we choose not to, and ban ourselves from creating this AI. In that case, then what? If our purpose as a species is to learn all there is to learn, then we would be doomed to fail, as we would never be able to learn the information that the more intelligent AI would have created. If our purpose is to live a life of productivity, then we once again would end up failing, as regardless of what inventions we make, we would know that the AI would still be able to create more productive and efficient inventions. If our purpose is just to live a life of happiness, then we would have no reason to ban the AI. We could just code it with inbuilt instructions to make mankind live as happy a life as possible. If we then choose to manufacture AI and decide our purpose is to live a life of productivity, then the AI would likely reach a point in which it is so efficient in comparison to us that we as workers would be useless. As workers, we would get in the way of productivity as the maintenance of a human would be more costly than that of an AI, whilst the AI would produce greater amounts of products. In that case, our only way to achieve our goal of maximum productivity would be through the ending of our own existence. Maybe our purpose then isn't maximum productivity, but to learn all there is to learn, and we choose to utilise AI in pursuit of this goal. Given some thought, it is clear that there is a flaw in this. AI is more intelligent than us, and therefore we would not be able to learn all that the AI learns, as it would be simply too complex for us. In a similar way, for example, we would not be able to teach and explain to the animals of the Amazon rainforest the socio-economic reasons as to why we are destroying their habitats. On a lighter note, maybe our brain is special. We might one day discover that what makes life is unique and cannot be manufactured. Or perhaps our brain is not special, but we learn how to integrate AI into our brain and instead improve the efficiency and intelligence of our race in cooperation with AI rather than in competition. Our fate also depends on what we choose our purpose to be, and as that is not inherently defined, you can choose whatever purpose you like. As with the invention of nuclear weapons, if we remain civil and research the implications of the technology, we will avoid any extinction events. So do not fear AI, as your life will not end at the hands of a machine, but instead at the end of the path you chose. <laughs>